In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint the Azurite ruins in a graveyard sort of theme. Let's get started. Hey guys, Jared from Mini Junkie. So Age of Sigmar 2.0 is right around the corner and in anticipation of that, I've been kind of getting together some, some terrain and um, a battle mat. So I got this uh, Soul Blight Necropolis just a cool sort of graveyard wintry look and uh, you know I'm gonna get some terrain and all that stuff together so that I can play probably hardly ever but I still always like to get terrain together when I get excited about a game I don't know what it is and the other reason I'm doing sort of a ghostly or cold ruins kind of vibe is the new uh, night haunt models that are coming out you've probably seen them online they are so good they're so cool so I am almost certainly gonna do some night haunts for either a force or some tutorials and things like that. And that's why I'm painting my ruins in this theme. But yeah, these are the ruins in question. Um, really nice kit, actually. It's only like, I don't know, it was like, whoops. It was only like 35 bucks Canadian or something like that. And uh, go together really easily. They're really, they're push fit. And I actually didn't even glue them because I don't know, maybe I'll like rearrange the configuration at some point. Definitely a lot of mold lines though. I saw some reviews and, and other people have complained about that. And so I, I would definitely say, yeah, it's a pain in the butt cleaning these up. There's basically a mold line along every edge, including the inside edge of things like windows and doorways and stuff. So there's a bit of a pain. But once you get them cleaned up and uh, I don't know, I'll hold them up. Can't really see them. I'll post a picture. Um, nice details, you know, not overly ornate, just really good. Um, almost, I want to say generic, but I doubt GW wants to hear that. Um, ruins, which I think could even work for Frostgrave and other games as well, but um, I'm definitely getting these ready for Age of Sigmar. And as with some of my other tutorials, I'm showing you also some techniques that, as I was sort of experimenting, right? I, I, I was sort of feeling my way through it because I wasn't 100% sure what effect I was going to end up with um, and if what was going to work and what wasn't, so I tried a couple things that did or did not work. There's that blue i was trying to create like a vibe of like a blue ethereal gateway forming in the bricks and mostly it looks like a blue spray paint splotch so i don't know if i'll do that on the rest of the rooms and it'd be easy enough to fix if i want to i'm just like it looks good enough it's fine so consider that a very optional step in this tutorial but generally speaking i'd say these are pretty easy to do so let's uh head to the painting desk and i'll show you how okay guys so here's the final result we're going for with this tutorial here's a couple of action shots of the terrain on a soul blight mat and as an added bonus here's what it looks like with some of the cobwebs on it and I'm going to show you how I did that later in the uh, video to start with we prime the ruins black I used Badger Steinal Res black primer then using some Elysian green or you could use camo green I decided to try and be clever and spray this into any uh, crevices and, and nooks and crannies on the model so that when I end up dry brushing them gray later they would show through in all the cracks and give it a really cool like you know lichen mossy looking color but in the end all these sort of pre dry brush steps I did I don't know if they really show up that well the exception being with the brickwork where I think it actually does look pretty cool showing through the cracks in the bricks Similar step here using P3 Arcane Blue. Again, pretty debatable if this actually shows up in the final product, so I would say you can mostly skip this step. Um, I did spray it around the edges of the brickwork, and I think that ends up looking pretty good, so you could, you could do it for that. Last sort of pre-shading step was with Vallejo Air Earth Red. Um, you could use any sort of leathery, light brown here. It was just to simulate dust and dirt. You could probably use Xandri dust if you wanted. And again, very debatable if this ends up showing up on the final product, so you could probably skip this step too. Hey look, a step you can't skip. This is Eschen Gray. You could also use Mechanicus Standard Gray. Standard gray. Um, just a heavy dry brush of this over all the stonework. Uh, obviously avoiding um, the brickwork in some of the pieces because we want to treat that differently. We're going to make it stand out with a slightly different color. Uh, but yeah, just straight up dry brush the, the stones with this color. 
After that, to bring out the detail, I did the same thing with Administratum Gray. It's a light gray. You could use any light gray, really. And it's a lighter dry brush for sure. Trying to keep it on all the raised edges. Um, you know, sometimes brushing downward motion to get like the top edge of a windowsill, things like that. I use dark sea blue as the first base color on the brickwork. You could use Incubi Darkness or Dark Reaper, I would say. Um, you know, it's it's basically a dark sort of blue green. Lots of options here. You can really you could do it any color you like. Next I highlighted that with a dry brush of Dark Reaper, quite a heavy dry brush, and obviously if you use Dark Reaper as the base of your bricks you would want to use something a little lighter than that. Or add some white to it to, to lighten it for the highlight dry brush. I use Scale 75 Decayed Metal here for the to just base coat the metals. just the symbol here and the rings. I didn't do all the little flame icons. Um, any dark metallic, any metallic you like would work fine here. Um, I would go for a brown metallic like a bronze or copper something like that because then it'll look cooler with the uh, oxidation we're going to do. With the bricks dry we're going to give it a highlight of uh, rust gray or again any lighter blue gray that you have depending on what color you base them with. And this is a lighter dry brush, and I'm just trying to catch like the tops of the bricks. I mean, obviously that's not exactly what's gonna happen, but just giving them a, a highlight to bring out the brick detail and make sure it shows up. Now to give the effect of um, moss kind of growing up from the ground onto the rocks or the sort of stone surfaces, I gave them a light, light airbrush of Elysium Green um, from a bit of a distance to really help it diffuse and cover a wide area and across the bottom. You could do this with thin, thin washes of this color as well. On the metallics, I took uh, Nylic Oxide from GW and just painted it right on there. Um, pretty heavily, I wanted it to look quite old and oxidized. You can always um, brush a little bit off with your finger across the surface like I'm doing to bring some of the metal back, um, but I definitely wanted these to look pretty old. Here's a goofy step you can totally skip if you want. I took a little arcane blue, dabbed it into my water pot, and just stabbed it on there in a blotchy pattern to try and make it look like a sort of a ghostly portal effect. And then what I did is I Kind of, I wanted it to look like it was shining through the bricks. This is a total fail. Um, I kind of dab it off with this, like a paper towel, wipe it off a bit with my finger, but I don't know, just mostly looks like a blob. The next step to add the spider webs, I use Green Stuff World Spider Serum plus their cleaner, which I think you probably need to help get it out of your airbrush. It's pretty weird stuff. You'll see I'm spraying it into a box because the first time I sprayed this I used high pressure and no box and there were spider webs all over my painting area and now I don't know which ones are real and which ones are not because I work in the basement. Um, really interesting stuff. They recommend building like a sort of a frame out of melted plastic sticks and stuff and you can definitely do that. For my purposes I really just wanted some sort of like old spider webby looking effect on the ruins in various places. I didn't want to get super hardcore and make perfect spider webs. So I just, I turned my pressure way down. It's probably only like 10 PSI or something and holding it relatively far back and kind of spraying it across, across where there's raised surfaces, um, giving it something to grab onto and to sort of form a web. If you spray it just sort of into open air beside something, beside like an edge or something I think it's not really gonna do much um, so it's really something you would just experiment with I don't think you can do this with a hand brush I think you pretty much are gonna need to airbrush this and again do it into a box or you're gonna have spider webs all over the place I 
here's the final ruins um, with that spider web. I probably went a little heavy with it. Uh, I was having fun. That was pretty cool stuff. Uh, you can see that a lot of that sort of first step, the first steps where I sprayed in the creases doesn't really show through, so you could probably just totally skip that step. Hope you're digging this, though. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel for more of these, and we'll see you next time.